All right, we're ready to start up again with our last session for the program. And Casey Baseflug is going to talk about the AWFCG, Alaska Wildfire Coordinating Group, Fuels Committee function. All right, Casey. All right, thanks, Ed. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. So um, Casey Baseflug again here. Uh, I am the BLM State Fuels Program Lead, but I'm also the chair of the AWFCG Fuels Management Committee. Talk about a little bit of a function and uh, uh, get the word out there that this committee exists. So the Fuels Management Committee, um, in about uh, uh, kind of when I took over this job in 2019, um, I started poking around and asked if there's a Fuels Management Committee under AWFCG and found out there wasn't. Um, however, there had been one many moons ago. Um, it kind of disappeared dissipated uh, due to um, fuel program kind of going downhill and also uh, personalities. Um, and so started that process. Um, and then in 2021, we got the uh, FMC charter signed. Um, and so we are a committee underneath the uh, AWFCG, the Alaska Wildlife Fire Coordinating Group. Um, and uh, some of our uh, mission there is to provide um, coordination to enhance collaboration efficiencies and alignment of hazardous fuels and vegetation management project with Cat Fire and Community Assistance throughout the state. So we've probably seen that picture uh, already. Um, that is uh, the infamous uh, Sterling Fuel. So some FMC members, uh, again, myself, Casey Baselug as the chair, we've got Paige Jones as the uh, vice chair from uh, the Association of Village Council Presidents. Um, Darren Finley, who's been on the um, call as well, um, from the Department of Forestry, Chris Fryer with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Brad Reed with the Fish and Wildlife Service, Northway with Panama Chief Conference, Brian Mork with the National Park Service, Nathan Lajewski with Chugat Mute, um, Sue Rodman in the room here with the uh, um, Alaska Department of Fish and Game, and uh, new member Abe Davis with the US um, Forest Service, who's uh, been um, for a week. So. If you have any questions, ask him. Uh, and then our uh, BIA AWFCG liaison and South State Clear is also in the room. Uh, and then what we decided as a committee is to bring us a, a new, um, kind of a new and upcoming um, individual in the uh, fuels program um, as kind of a mentee um, admin person for the group. So that's Amanda Disman um, with the BLM who's the, um, from Anchorage as the uh, fuels management section. So this little uh, thing that's going on around the whole state there is a fuel budget increases. So uh, as we've already heard throughout this whole week, uh, there's been an influx in funds, uh, both in the state and in the federal agencies. Uh, some of those are the bipartisan infrastructure legislation. Uh, as the Department of Forestry has talked about, the, you know, they're getting some uh, money from the, from the state side of things instead of the way they've normally been getting it. So that's good. Uh, we also got a little pot of funds from the disaster relief. Um, and that's just a one-time, one-time deal that that also helped with the fuel program. Uh, then the, for the federal side of things, especially the DOI is a increase in our federal base fund. So that's something that's supposed to be static and remain be stable throughout the years. And so that's what we can build our organization on. Happy with there. All right, so some some things that we're working on right now from the um, fuel management committee side of things, um, and we work with Jen Schmidt and uh, Chris Chris Moore um, have been um, working on a state right statewide risk assessment or exposure map. You know, so we're um, working on that um, map with them, and uh, it's also been a task from the uh, AWFCG. Um, and then uh, um, we provide a little bit of uh, input to uh, um, Fire Research Committee, the um, Fire Research Development FERDAC Committee. Um, and uh, uh, Jen Barnes has been um, mainly working on that. So a fuels treatment guide for Alaska. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, coordinating resources planning for fuels treatments workshop. Um, uh, we, uh, we helped kind of get that ball rolling on that. And then uh, Sue Rodman and Casey Burns took that ball and uh, 
kick it down the road all the way until it uh, um, landed somewhere. And uh, we uh, um, put, they put on that uh, workshop, which was uh, a, good, a good start. And uh, we're hoping to build off of that. Um, and also the statewide fuel treatment in the agency map. Um, James Smith did show a map up there with some fuel treatments. We'd like to have a uh, uh, kind of similar to our uh, fuel or uh, fire map that we have on AI, uh, AICC that anybody can get on and look. Uh, it's a pretty interactive, easy to use map with all the fuel treatments. It will help uh, for also for planning um, cross boundaries, uh, but it also could help with the uh, compression side of things too. If you look down there and you see that there's a fuel treatment that's been out here. Uh, Help with that. Um, coordination for multi agency projects, um, uh, kind of the conduit um, for folks that uh, um, looking at these multi agency projects and uh, going in the right direction. Take a look at the pro uh, process for the risk assessment, CWCP project planning on a large um, regional scale. So you can break up the last two different regions and have some folks get assigned to those regions. Um, coordinate uh, WPP so we're not duplicating efforts. Assist with any requests and coordination uh, from our integration partners, cooperative and private. So here's a, just a quick slide of the statewide risk assessment exposure map. Um, again, you know, red red is bad, light blue is good. And so uh, it's a large scale um, map that uh, shows where the, where the higher risk areas are. Um, and then analyze that as so far as distance and the, the higher risk areas are in the state. Um, here's the F, F, FERDAC. Um, so what we're looking at that was a kind of as a supplement to the uh, forest treatment to reduce fire hazards in Alaska, accomplished eight studies, which is a great document. So we're looking at kind of a, like a reader's digest version, and uh, um, Jen can. Jim Barnes can probably do any more on what I'm looking at that, but um, it's a uh, um, more of a the top top of that uh, uh, slide there, um, showing you know pre and post, and then a couple couple of years after, just a quick um, down and dirty um, of uh, kind of a tick list of the fuel treatments. We we talked about it uh, in the last session as well uh, here, just the breakout. Um, panel is uh, um, having an area where we can put some of those uh, new research um, side of things that's coming through and also be a uh, uh, potentially some sort of working document. The resource planning for fuel treatment workshop we did uh, get a lot of uh, interest in it. So that was uh, so that was awesome. Um, this, this slide here just shows um, uh, even though um, BLM Kind of dominated it um, and uh, um, more federal side things, but this shows how many folks were involved and in, in participated in that workshop uh, throughout the state. So, um, you know, as far as the fuels management committee is trying to bring those folks together and, uh, you know, um, coordinate things throughout the state. One thing that we can also do too. Um, is uh, you know help us uh, need the environmental compliance. That's kind of a big, it's a big um, deal on the federal side of things at least. Uh, so there's been a lot of um, a lot of new folks within the fuels organization that have been struggling with the uh, um, NEPA documents um, and where to go with that. And so you know we can um, not necessarily you know write the NEPA form, but point them in the right direction, um, give them some guidance, um, share any documents that we have um, through our organizations. They like share use as a template, um, and uh, you know just help with that. So, um, and also you know provide some contacts for um, who they can contact for family questions on it. Uh, kind of also collect stuff from all the other agencies and have house to house somewhere that we can share. There's a, it's a um, statewide fuels treatment map uh, that. Uh, uh, I originally started working on it with our CIS um, folks. I like to have it a uh, the fuels management team. We like to have a, a statewide one uh, that shows shows pretty much everything everything out there. And fire use takers, which uh, for the for the BLM, um, 
there's actually a pretty big chunk of chunk of ground on out there that uh, is uh, uh, considered a fuels treatment. Right corner, where we were looking at it, there the pink stuff there is actually fire and use danger. So. Um, so again, coordination, um, CWPs and risk assessments. Um, you can also be a conduit between communities and agencies. Uh, there's been times where some of the communities have contacted somebody from the FMC and asked how they're gonna, how they're gonna do this, how they're gonna get funding, how they're gonna work on the CWPP. And uh, we've pointed them in the right direction, getting the right person to talk to and uh, help with that. And also coordinate between agencies. Um, with this influx of funding, uh, at least for the last year or so, uh, there's been a lot of independent actors where people are just trying to get stuff done and then um, find out that they might be working on the same project together. So uh, trying to coordinate that between uh, agencies so we're not duplicating efforts. Um, some future stuff that we're looking at doing um, is a multi-agency file sharing system. It sounds simple, but it's uh, pretty surprising on how hard it is to have a multi-agency file system out there. So we can share documents and keep documents and, and work on them together. Um, and then identify new and current funding sources. That's going to be something that's going to be a, a yearly thing. Um, uh, that's going to go on year after year after year, time after time. It's new. New and current funding sources. Um, and again, we we'll talked about how to get grants, how to get agreements, uh, stuff like that. So, you um, mentioned to help with that. Um, one thing I was talked about was the statewide hazardous fuel priority list. Um, that's going to be something a little bit harder to tackle because every agency is going to have their own priorities. Uh, but uh, um, some sort of pick list that uh, shows the priorities throughout the state um, so that people come up and prioritize that. We also um, prescribed fire is kind of um, growing a little bit more. We've been looking at more prescribed fire throughout the state through all the agencies. Um, and it's uh, some it's new, some it's uh, some they don't do a whole lot of. Um, so we're looking at the statewide prescribed fire tech video that can also be used as a public, uh, the public to show what, why we do prescribed fire and how we do it. And assist with interagency agreements. Um, I think we're already doing and we'll continue to do. Uh, and then the, along the prescribed fire again is um, some sort of Alaska Prescribed Fire Academy training of opportunities in Alaska. Uh, kind of like a mini training academy, I guess, is for prescribed fire just to get more folks and more experience in prescribed fire. Um, I think we don't do a, a lot of it here in Alaska actually compared to some other states, but uh, it is increasing and it's something that more of. Um, what we can help with, um, assist with planning across boundaries and multiple objective treatments. I kind of already talked about that already. Um, funding opportunities. Um, that's one thing the FMC, again, uh, you know, we're not going to uh, work on the agreements or anything like that for you, but uh, uh, we have representation from all the agencies. And so we point you in the right direction and uh, get you squared away on that. Uh, same thing with agreements, kind of kind of help help out with the agreements. Um, so hazardous fuels, um, I consider it uh, similar to fire suppression. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier. So fire does not uh, follow follow boundaries. Um, if you look at the map there, um, it shows all the protection zones and all the agencies within them. As you can see, almost every agency is represented in by almost every every zone out there too. And so. Um, Working together, I think, in, in collaboration, coordination is definitely key, and hopefully the uh, uh, FMC can help with that. Um, and uh, you know, more more fuels work, which we already talked about on the landscape, uh, could assist you know land managers with the fire decisions uh, when, when it's crossing boundaries. Um, you know, if it starts on this, uh, and we use the park park service for example, their mission is to let the fire burn they want to see it burn there's no uh, values at risk out there but close close by uh, there could potentially be a different agency um, that uh, wants the fire fire suppressed so we can put in fuel breaks there um, to allow that to happen. So we've already talked about that um, in the course you know fuel project but communities are such a value so 
some field projects around Alaska. Um, I'm not going to get into this too much because uh, we've already hit on most of these um, and uh, some of these same same slides and pictures you're probably going to see again. Um, fuel breaks, small, large scale, prescribed fires, community wildfire protection plans, risk assessment, biomass, which we've talked about too, uh, and habitat. This is this is a slide that uh, actually uh, Office of Wild and Fire drew together by what we put into NIFCOR, which is the uh, DOI's uh, fuel planning kind of web page and how we uh, prioritize projects and fund them. So they just pulled all the projects in there from 2022 to 2024, um, showing how they're all scattered around the state. So um, there's the Fuels Management Committee. Uh, helping with the prioritize, not really prioritize, but to, to help with those projects and the moving move forward. This, I'm just going to hit on a couple of them. We've already talked about some of these already, but the reason why I want to talk about these is they're a multi agency um, project, and uh, um, members from the FMC are, are involved with uh, these in some, some way or another. Um, and getting more and more involved as they progress. So, Copper River Area Community Wildfire Protection Plans um, started that about uh, I think two years ago, um, getting through an agreement with the state and putting some money towards it from the BLM. Um, and then the state also is, uh, I believe, putting in quite a bit of money up themselves into that, uh, that process out there. I'm looking at, I believe, seven communities um, across all boundaries down in there. So. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool uh, um, task going on down there. And we've already talked about this one we can do, but again, multi agencies um, affected both from the fuel side of things and from the fire, wildland fire side of things. So the Kenai, the all hands, all lands, uh, with the Luke Sterling fuel break. Uh, and we've, uh, uh, we've probably talked about this um, more so today than uh, we probably should have, but it is a, it is a success story. Um, and uh, uh, going back on this, uh, how it can be used in the top top corner there um, from the Swan Lake fire, um, and it was utilized there not as much directly because the fire went a different direction. Uh, also, the Funny River fire, um, and then the bottom picture on the on the right there um, has been mentioned before, but what it looks like now uh, is uh, a lot different than what it looks like on the left. Wing. Happening. So, a lot of deciduous, a lot of aspen, like birch growing up into there, um, which is still considered a fuel break. Doesn't look at it. All right, prescribed fire. So, um, there's been times when, uh, you know, folks are looking to do a prescribed burn and, and been brought up to the fuels management committee looking for some folks so we can help um, get some folks some experience, both in, in, uh, Alaska, but also in the lower 48, there's opportunity to go in the lower 48 to do some burning. Uh, we sent some folks to TFTC, which is the kind of fire training center every year. Um, some of those inquiries come through the um, fuels management committee. Some other things going on. Um, of course, you know, the biomass logging, commercial firewood, and pre commercial thinning. Uh, just some photos from, from around um, from the state. Which is, uh, from, uh, Went out and Steve decided to share some pictures for me. So thank you, Tim. Uh, and uh, yeah. So that's about it. Um, you know, it's fun to get out there with the fuels management committee is, and uh, we're you know we're basically a, uh, we're pretty pretty new when it comes down to it, about a year old. Um, so um, we're still learning and figuring out what we're going to do and where we're going to go, but. Uh, been a good, been a good process so far. So, do you have any questions? In phone land, virtual land. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Casey. Um, I'm going to close out the meeting unless somebody has some profound words of wisdom they want to share before we close.
Yeah, see, I said profound wisdom. All these guys stepped up. Oh, uh, Tom wants me to talk about SAS membership. That me? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mentioned it at the beginning, uh, Society of American Foresters. Terry, how many members do we have nationwide? Right? 94? Ninety-three hundred members nationwide. We've got just under a hundred in Alaska. So we're we're kind of small, the food crowd, but um, you know we try to, with the exception of the last two years, we had we've always had in-person annual meetings such as this one. We rotate between Southeast Anchorage and somewhere around Fairbanks. Um, the chapters are active especially Yukon River chapter, Cook Inlet chapter, uh, Southeast, a little less active, let's say. Uh, but a lot of good stuff going on. You know, it's a good chance to meet some new people, get some different perspectives. Like I said, there's information on the SAF on the back table, application, you can talk to anybody that's a member if you're interested. It's a professional society for foresters, but it's for anybody. How'd I do it? Chris and Terry? Pretty good. Okay, he said pretty good. That means he wants to say something. I think you're, on, you're definitely on the right track, but we have a, a new membership drive we just started. The, you'll see it back there. It's called Together We Rise. And uh, there's some good things on the website. If you want to see some individual, uh, I guess you call it a testimonial from people that have joined SAF, uh, some early in their career, some later in their career. We, they're just short little one, two minute uh, videos, but they'll tell you why it was important to them to become a member of SAF and what it meant to them as their career developed and uh, a lot of opportunity for continuing education to keep you on the top of your game. We have the National Convention, which is coming up in Baltimore this year, which has a whole range of technical sessions as well as policy and other things along those lines. But we have a lot of tools that will really help you in your jobs uh, as you progress uh, through your careers as fire managers and forest managers. And so I'd really encourage you to take a, a good look at it. And uh, Terry, you're welcome to add a few more words. You're one of our best recruiters because you've done this many times, but uh, uh, it's uh, a great organization. It will help you build a network of professionals, your peers. Uh, we have a certified forester program if you would like to take a look at that. The extra credential it just shows your uh, employer and your uh, peers that you've gone an extra step in attaining that credential. And uh, many consulting foresters get it. But I'm going to give it to Terry. He's more versed than I am in this topic, but uh, I'm learning quick. All right, so again, the question of to be a member or not to be a member um, is a, it's a great question. It's an important one, and it's one that we, we have a lot of discussions about and how we can continue to do better and also continue to look at how we share that message and what that message is. What is the value of being a system? You know, what people often ask, what do we want to get out? Um, and, and there are a few different answers. You know, Chris gave some great examples of your uh, head, but I think that some, one of the ones that has been sticking out to me recently has been um, in a lot of cases, what have you already benefited from uh, the system? So if you have a forestry or natural resources degree, then it's probably taking an essay to the program. Um, and so that whole piece of setting the standard of what it means to practice forestry in the United States is what SAF does for all professional forests, in addition to the various efforts about policy issues that uh, oftentimes we think of us in the state and nationally. And that stuff all trickles down as far as it impacts how you work over. And so as an organization, it really is that piece of how we set the standard for the needs to be a professional in this space and how we continue to maintain that and inform others of why it's important to have someone who is a trained professional to do this work. So there's there's a lot of different parts and pieces that come in play with that. Uh, everything from what Chris shared as far as being a certified for the different training opportunities, the resources that we provide, uh, the engagement with various communities that we provide. But, but ultimately, it's like we set the standard for everything uh, when it comes to 
its work. And that's something that we're all extremely proud of. Um, it's something that we really stick by. So I, I think that, um, you know, if you're not a member, definitely consider it and think about it. Try it out, see what it's like. There's a lot of great information. Uh, and of course, you get to get a discount when you come to these meetings. So I'm very excited on the case. Uh, but, but, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's been really meaningful in my career. Uh, and if you, if you think about even talking with employees, it's something that really you know, kind of resonates with me. Is it's one thing to lead a group of people when you have positional power over them. Another thing to lead a group of volunteers. And the skills you gain being a volunteer and SAF and engaging at any level of the organization it really does own and build those skill sets. And, uh, I'll say supportive environment. Sometimes you will challenge it, but but it's so meaningful to learn those skills in a space where um, you know, the job's not on the line, yes, but uh, in a space where you really do have to learn how to build an understanding and build a, a shared vision of what it is to move forward and get people to actually move out of that vision. So uh, those, that's one of the I think key responsibilities and key skill sets that you build for those professionals in the careers uh, being active in SAF. So that, that's it. Great. Thanks, Terry. I told you those guys were more eloquent than I am. So thanks for that. And, you know, it reminded me of um, being involved in SAF. It's not just forestry, it's fire, it's fuels. They got working groups. How many working groups do you have? 20 some? 22 of uh, silviculture, carbon, wildlife, inventory. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're involved in all, we're, we're involved in all aspects of national forest, or just wild. So that's kind of cool. I think that's really helpful. That. I want to say that I uh, hope and I think this was very helpful. I hope the dialogue and discussion was useful to all the forestry professionals, fire, fuel professionals in the room. And uh, we had a lot of good discussion. And I think uh, these kinds of, of uh, events are helpful. And so I, I hope everybody that attended thought they were too. Uh, the hybrid meeting, uh, we're still, you know, I thought, I thought we had it down pretty well, but every, every physical location, they had a different setup than we had in the past. And so it's, you have to be, you have to be flexible and, uh, figure out things on the fly. So I think, uh, we, we did have some challenges today, technically, but we overcame them. So if anybody has any suggestions in the future, I'd be happy to hear them. I want to thank, again, the Yukon River chapter for hosting this event and organizing the program. Uh, you guys did a lot of work. You got a lot of great speakers and a good program. I appreciate that. Also appreciate the speakers coming and participating whether they were here in person or virtually. And then as well as the rest of the participants, everybody who came in person and virtually as well. Thank you for that. We are gonna have our Alaska SAF annual business meeting. Start 15 minutes after the end. Uh, it's gonna be at 3.30, it's probably be about 3.40. So, Again, you're welcome to come if you want to. The, the people that need to be here know who they are, and people that want to be here can, can come too. And it's in, it's in this room as well. The banquet, if you signed up for it, starts at six. Once again, in this room, and we will be giving out a few awards. And then the field trip, is tomorrow we pick back on the ITC field trip, the Intertribal Timber Council, and uh, we're meeting tomorrow. The buses are starting to load at 0730, 730 a.m. 
at the visitor center parking lot. Just look for four big buses. And uh, it should be a really good field trip. I know Adam and Tana Chiefs have put a lot of work into it uh, for the last several years because we started planning this meeting in 2020. And it got canceled in 2021. We should have it down. Okay, uh, that's all I have. Thanks again for coming and walked away from the camera. Any comments from virtual land? Okay. Oh, Thank you for hosting. Just that we got a, lot of, got a lot of positive feedback about having a virtual meeting. So I a hybrid meeting. So yeah, yeah. Like I said, it was it was uh, kind of tricky knowing where to look and who to talk to. But um, I feel like I have my back to the screen, but I'm actually facing the camera. So I guess that worked out okay. All right. Thanks again. Have a good evening. If you're looking for CFE credits, there's a, uh, a sign up sheet in the back there. Just put your name in your SAF number. Business meeting starts at 3.35. Andrea, are you gonna handle the uh, CFE credits for the online folks? Correct, yep. I'll email them to you in a couple of days after everyone's uh, filled it out. Okay, thanks. I guess just as a backup for online folks, if you're looking for CFE credits, just send me, yeah, just send me your uh, SAF number. Yeah, there's a survey they're filling out that'll collect all that for you. So. Okay, okay, cool, thanks. You're just gonna leave this link open for the business meeting? It is, yes, it is the same link, so. Yep, yep, just uh, don't, don't leave the meeting and we'll be back in 15. Thanks, Brian.